Jules Verne, Around the World in 80 Days, Chapter 1, Phileas Fogg and Passepartout. London, 1872. Phileas Fogg was a mysterious, handsome English gentleman. Most people didn't know very much about him because he was a very private man and didn't have many friends. He also didn't do things which other people of his age and state did. Was Phileas Fogg rich? Undoubtedly. But nobody could imagine how he had made his money. Did he visit other countries? He could name a lot of them on the world map, and he knew the most incredible things about them. He probably traveled at one time, but some people insisted that he didn't leave London for many years. Maybe he only traveled in his head. Phileas Fogg was a stranger in almost all famous social places in London. He was the member of the Reform Club, and that was all. Staying in the club was the only time he spoke to other people. Mr. Fogg read newspapers and played cards there. He didn't play to win. He played for the enjoyment of the game. He often won, but he didn't keep the money. He gave it to charity. The game was in his eyes a contest, a struggle with a difficulty, a challenge that didn't require any physical effort. Mr. Fogg didn't have a wife or children. He lived alone in a very comfortable house in Sevilla Row, a good address in central London. He had breakfast and dinner at the Reform Club every day, in the same room, at the same table, and went home at midnight. A single man servant helped him. This person had always to be on time and to be completely loyal to Phileas Fogg. In fact, this very 2nd of October, his man-servant lost his job because the water he brought Phileas Fogg to shave with was two degrees colder, and that was where our story began. Phileas Fogg was sitting in his armchair waiting for his new servant at between 11 and half past 11. At exactly half past eleven, Mr. Fogg had to go to the Reform Club. He looked up at the hands of the large clock by the wall that counted every second with a loud tick. There was a knock at the door and James Foster, the dismissed servant, appeared. The new servant, he said. A young man of thirty came in and bowed. You are a Frenchman, I believe, asked Phileas Fogg, looking at him carefully. And your name is John? Jean, Monsieur, not John, said the young man. Jean Passepartout. I believe I'm honest, Monsieur, and I must tell you that I haven't been a manservant all my life. I was a singer. Then I rode a horse and danced on a rope in a circus. I was also professor of gymnastics, and for a time I worked for the fire brigade in Paris. I found myself out of place and heard that Monsieur Fogg was looking for a servant. You won't find the most exact and settled gentleman in the United Kingdom, they told me. He does the same thing every day. So, I came here to ask about the job in the hope of finally being able to live a quiet life. Yes, someone at the Reform Club recommended you to me. Do you understand what type of person I am looking for? Yes, monsieur, I do. And I think I am perfect for the job. Good. What time is it? 
Twenty-two minutes past eleven, Passepartout replied, taking his silver watch out of a small side pocket. You are four minutes too slow, noted Phileas Fogg, looking at his own watch. No matter. So now, from this moment, this Wednesday, 2nd October, you are in my service. Phileas Fogg got up, took his hat in his left hand, put it on his head with an automatic motion, and went off without a word. From this brief introduction, Passepartout was able to make note of his new master. He was about forty years old, an elegant man with a handsome, gentle face. He was tall, with light hair and whiskers, and with perfect teeth. He was the sort of person who remained incredibly calm, even under pressure. He had gentle eyes that fixed you with a firm stare. He never seemed upset or worried. He was so exact that he was never in a hurry, was always ready, and was economical in all his steps and his motions. He never took one step too many, and always went to his destination by the shortest way. He was a typical Englishman. It was always difficult to guess an Englishman's true feelings. And our Frenchman? Passepartout had a pleasant face and he was incredibly strong. He had blue eyes and untidy brown bush of hair. He was an honest person who understood the meaning of true friendship and loyalty. He served in ten English houses before, but he could not take root in any of them. All of his former masters were constantly running about the country or looking out for adventure. Passepartout was tired of that kind of life. Would he be as absolutely well organized as his new master required? Only experience could solve the question. It was half past eleven when Passepartout, who was now alone in his new home, decided to look around. After looking in all the different rooms, where everything was in ideal order, he finally came to his own bedroom. Above the fireplace there was an electric clock. It was the same electric clock that Phileas Fogg had in his room. The two clocks ticked at the exact same second. Above the clock there was a piece of paper with the details of Mr. Fogg's daily routine. He got up at 8 a.m., then there was the toast and tea at 23 minutes past 8, the shaving water at 37 minutes past 9, and the toilet at 20 minutes to 10. At half past 11, Phileas Fogg went to the Reform Club. His day always ended at midnight when he went to bed. This is just what I wanted, thought Passepartout. What a domestic and regular gentleman, a real machine. Well, I don't mind serving a machine. <laughs>